Hello, hello, hello. I am so elated to be here today. My name is Dawn Stone, aka The Conflict Chick, and I have a treat for you today. I have brought on not only a master mathematician, <laughs> but a gentleman who can teach you how to make connections unlike any other person in the world. And I'm talking about Mr. Glenn W. Hunter. He is author of the book, Storytelling, Wins the Best Engagements. Glenn, thank you for being here with us today. Don, I am absolutely elated to be here with you today. <laughs> and thank you very much for bringing my book to the forefront of your audience, because um, I think I have something important to say, but I tell you, when you're showing it, it looks a whole lot better. So um, thank you for joining me or letting me join you as we start telling the story of um, this book and how it's going to help business professionals. Right, right, Glenn. And so, you know, I want to give, I want to give the audience a little background. The great thing about knowing you mm -hmm. and, and, and knowing your work and being able to work with you at, in, in higher education mm -hmm. and also as a, a fellow consultant, one of the things that I can say that I have really learned from you is the power of mastering storytelling. And I am so glad that you decided to put this in a book because I needed some more notes. I'm going to be real honest with you. <laughs> because storytelling in corporate settings, in family settings, in uh, nonprofit settings, in educational settings is key. So I, I want to start with a couple of questions. Yes. Um, for those who may not know you, mm -hmm. First question is, who is Glenn W. Hunter and what are you passionate about? So Glenn W. Hunter is um, the managing director of Hunter and Beyond LLC. I'm a branding consultant out here on the West Coast. Uh, but being out here on the West Coast, um, in the Inland Empire, just east of uh, Los Angeles, uh, means I am uh, close to four airports, so I'll pretty much fly anywhere uh, to take care of a client. Uh, so I have options. What I um, am really passionate about uh, are a couple of things. Uh, one of them, mm -hmm. in fact, is storytelling. You know, growing up uh, as a youngster in, uh, in Southern California, not the most affluent part, but I was known for telling great stories. And when I got caught, I was known for getting great whoopings. Now I get paid to tell stories. This is great. What a country. Right. O only here in the <laughs> United States. Can you turn uh, uh, that type of a negative into a positive? Absolutely. So when you talk about storytelling, when people hear this term, could you provide us with a, a good solid definition of what storytelling really is and why it matters? You know, it kind of falls under the marketing umbrella. Unfortunately, marketing has been pulled in so many different directions with technological uh, improvements, you know, whether you're on one platform or another, it almost has lost its magic. But what it really comes down to from a marketing standpoint is the ability to communicate with a marketplace. So if you're able to talk about your product or show your product, whether it's visually or even be able to experience your uh, product tactile, tactic, tactically, uh, with your hands, you have the ability to communicate, persuade, and get people to either buy your product, use your product, or engage your service. Storytelling comes at it from yet another dimension, and that dimension is emotion. And what science has actually shown us, more decisions are made based off of emotion than cold, hard facts. You use the facts to justify it, but it's your emotion that drives it. Think about going through um, a department store, kind of an old, sc old school uh, example, but it still works. And so may I help you? No, no, thank you. May I help you? No, no, thank you. And then that one person makes eye contact, makes you remember someone when you were young and good looking, makes you think of somebody you wanna be. May I help you? Yes. Right. And then you've made the purchase because of that emotional connection. Something triggered. Baby, yeah. I had to buy that because you reminded me of my great, my great niece. Just sweet as pie, right? You have nothing yeah. to do with that, but you connect because of the emotional uh, connection or the emotional um, unity that comes just from interacting. And if you're able to con really control that superpower, 
It opens up more opportunities to communicate your value, to sell more, to create uh, more money for you and your employer. And in the event, uh, Don, like you and I, when we are our own employer, uh, we get to keep it. (laughs) Absolutely. And I love keeping my money where the stories reside, where the stories reside, where the stories reside. Yes. So thank you for that. That really helps us kind of frame my next question for you, because I'm going through some of my favorite parts in the book. And I love the fact that your book is laid out in a way that allows your audience to reflect, because not often do we get a good book that gives us so much um, information, in palatable doses, by the way, but you give us a place to write down and do the stuff that I've been trying to to learn from you. So now I have my own book where I can write it down my doggone self. I, I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that. So I know in chapter one, mm-hmm. you, you talk a lot about engaging your belief. Talk to us about why engaging our belief is the first step to excellent storytelling. You got to believe your own story. Even if it's fictional, you got to believe your own story. So if I'm telling you that I'm a 18-year-old young man with with broad shoulders and a a narrow waist and a great voice and good eyesight, most of that's not true. But if I can convey to you that I'm bringing those attributes, we can connect. You know Mm -hmm. what? You're close enough for government work. Just keep talking to me. But the idea is for that connection to come um, organically So when you are in in the interaction, as you get to the point of business, that you have a comfort level with that individual. You know what? They have five of the seven attributes I needed. And Mm. that's enough because they blew those five out the water. It's not that I need to make sure I have all eight of these or all seven of these um, checked. So Mm -hmm. the idea is to create comfort, create confidence, create believability. But that is done really, again, by triggering the emotional connection. Uh, One thing I like to say, you cannot effectively pull on the purse strings till you first tug on the heart strings. People do business with people they like and trust. And at the beginning of that is having a a commonality with them as individuals. You know, that's that's what I love. And, And if you have not gotten your copies yet, I'm going to tell you, go to Amazon right now and type in Glenn with two N's, W. Hunter, and get a copy of his book. Because what he is talking about is true science. And I love the fact that I'm hearing the theory being broken down into layman's terms, common folk, okay? He's from the West Coast, I am from the dirty South, okay? So what I love about this book is that no matter where you are in your organization, in your life, in your abilities, you are able to take this information and apply it to your three-year-old or your your 80-year-old grandparent, Mm -hmm. right? Or your three-year-old child. You can also walk with this information into any corporate environment, nonprofit environment, community um, setting and apply this work because it does start with emotion. I I do. And I look at that and I'm like, oh, that's the neuroscience. 98% of what we do is here and here. And so we've got to start with our heart um, and and really move into the more what we call that frontal cortex or, uh, you know, that uh, higher level decision making. But it starts with your connection with people. So on that note, I want to pull you to... uh, You got in chapter four, I really, really, really love this area when we're talking about engaging your prospects, right? Yes. And, you know, it talks a little bit about Stephen Covey and and, and the things that we want to do, like, you know, get your agreement before we can even get to the agreement. We've got to make a connection. Mm -hmm. Uh, You want to exceed their desires, things of this nature. And on page 27, you talk about acknowledge some honestly complimentary element and the prospect's physical presentation. So I love the fact that you're giving us tangible things we can do in any environment, in any setting Mm -hmm. to make an immediate connection. 
talk to me about that and how you end up in the what I call the question zone where you're asking your prospects questions and ultimately um, drawing in more business. Well, when you're, again, you're having the questions, but before the questions, you want to have a sense of comfort. And the mm -hmm. idea of comf creating comfort is that we're two individuals, we have our own agendas, we have our own objectives, but we're two people trying to get to another place. So if you're selling mm -hmm. to me, Don, you're trying to get another sale, I'm trying to get as much value as I can from what you're selling. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're, we're literally having a polite conversation. So with regards to the interaction, what I want is to be able to, to listen, you know, one on both ends, but I want to be able to listen because I want to show empathy, right? Mm -hmm. But more importantly, I want to show interest, genuine mm -hmm. interest. And where that comes in is not just with the questions that you ask, but the follow-up questions that you have for mm. them as well. So when I engage that, uh, that that prospect or the opportunity, excuse me, the opportunity, what mm -hmm. I want to do is create an environment where we're talking as individuals. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we may bring our representatives, our titles, things like that. And some of that does tie into who we are. But mm -hmm. from a prospect perspective, I need to know what's important to you. What do you mm -hmm. think? Not what's best, what, not what's what I found in the shareholder um, in right. the shareholder letter. What's important to you? What's your pet project? What's going to get you your next promotion? How can I help with my solution? And I mm. think once it's personalized, now the emotion sets in. This person doesn't want me to just, he doesn't want to just buy my product. Mm -hmm. He really wants me to be successful. Mm. That only comes by understanding your story. So even if you're selling me, I'm asking you questions. But it's also your comfort level in sharing so that, yes, we're, you know, we can talk about the win and the triple win and all that. But at the end of the day, our conversation, I want the conversation to go toward you winning. Mm. That's, that's huge. Because, you know, especially... Now that we've had, we've experienced this uh, COVID pandemic and how people are just, just innately afraid now. So, you know, that fear, you know, false evidence appearing real. What would you say um, to someone who says, you know, I can't do this. This whole storytelling thing doesn't work for me. I'm introverted. I don't have the network. What is your advice as they try to peel back the onion and understand your book and how they can apply it to, to win. The first thing I would tell that person is to practice listening. Mm. Practice listening. Uh, there's an old saying in sales, uh, he who speaks the most loses. So people like to hear their own voice. People like to tell their story. You know, I can go into the grocery store and I'm buying, I'm trying to figure out, am I going to get ambrosia apples or Fuji apples, right? And what will end up happening in today's environment, somebody may come by, you know, in their, their apron and everything and say the ambrosia apples are incredible and, you know, mm -hmm. this bunch just came in. So all they have to say, maybe give you a smile afterwards. You know, you go to the right grocery store in the right part of town, they'll literally toss one to you. No, go ahead, just try it. And you're like, wait, I can't do that. I'm in a grocery store. But no, what they've done is this. You're not in a grocery store. Somebody is telling you something. I've had these and they're great. And if you're still eating Fuji apples, get the ambrosias. But the important thing is now we've connected as people. Mm. And there's always room for that because that creates uniqueness. It's not my title. It's not my accomplishment. It's not my degrees on the wall. No, we're just two folks. And we have something in common, and this is the topic. Somebody's buying, someone's selling. But at the end of the day, if we both extract value and the value we're looking for, we both walk away happy. That's harder and harder to do in the business environment. Somebody's always, yes. oh, man, I paid too much for that. I got took. But if yes. we're both walking away emotionally satisfied, we had a good connection. You get more referrals. What? Who among us in the sales world doesn't want a good referral? Right, you get more referrals <laughs> and you have more follow up business. Okay, mm -hmm. you gave me this. You, I trusted you on that. Tell me about the bananas, you know. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that only comes from being an attentive listener 
and then understanding the power of the, what I call, well, I, I stole this, the pregnant pause, embrace mm -hmm. the silence, and then say, yes, I've had the apples, I've had the bananas, I don't know what I'm going to try, but I'll be back next week, I'll find you. Right. And you know, Glenn, that's what I love about your book, because it takes something that we have taken for granted. So you and I, although we look fabulous, Indeed. Have, have been around the moon a few times and around the sun. A few more. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't going to say it because, you know, the sun is actually good for us. Yeah. <laughs> but I, in, in all actuality, it's something that sounds so fundamental but for some people, and I guess with the influx of technology and, you know, we talked about the pandemic and now how it, it is even harder to make these connections. But I love the fact that in your book and what you just explained is we all have a story. We all have a narrative and there is power in that. Even in making a recommendation about an apple, you know, I was sitting over here thinking about the pink lady myself and my rooms. I love apples. Mm -hmm. I'm an apple snob. So I would be in on that conversation and ultimately would, would, would be open to more business with this apple fellow apple connoisseur. So I love that. I love, I love the fact that you have taken something that combines social psychology, mm -hmm. neuroscience, and of course the world we live in, business, period, relationships, psychology, psychology, regular psychology, and, and just really tied it all in one book that you can use, put on your shelf, you can put it in your car, you can take it into every setting, every meeting, everywhere that you go, because it tells you how to engage your network, how to build rapport, how to engage your industry, and it asks you questions. And, and, you know, for those of you, you have to get this book, okay? Because not only do we have reflections, we have affirmations. And Glenn, you and I both know how powerful affirmations are, declaring things that are true or, or, or where you want to be and become, right? Mm -hmm. And so I love the one um, you have in this chapter that talks about the niche, you know, in what niche would you like to enjoy some business development success? What sales skills would you specifically like to improve in order to be more successful across the industry? And then you give a call to action. What will be your next step? So as you're reading this book, you are able to take the information and devise your own plan. I mean, it's like... I needed this a couple, of, I needed this 10 years ago, Glenn. We should have had this interview 10 years ago, right? When we first started talking about these concepts and all those things that you do really well. So um, I, I, I want to know about the power. And then I know we're, we're running short on time and I want to respect your time and the time of those who are listening here. And thank you all. Um, you'll be able to order the book here because we'll have the links. Um, you will also be able to um, connect with the blogs that help build and continue to teach you about why storytelling is important. Storytelling comes in the form of writing and in, a, in an, or an oratory way as well. So everything you speak and everything you write and everything you do is all connected emotionally. So Glenn, what is one thing final piece of advice you would give to anyone listening mm -hmm. who really wants to take storytelling and use it to help them build a better network for themselves personally and professionally? I'm going to give it to you in two steps, if I may. Okay. So the first step is be authentic. Mm. Be authentic. No matter how good of a, a, a storyteller, how good of a liar you may think you are, um, that's, a, that's a very slippery path. So be authentic. People will respond better to authenticity. I don't know is in fact an answer. Mm. I don't know, but I will find out and get back to you is an even better answer. 
So that's the first part is, um, is, is be authentic. The second part is actually, I believe the magic for successful business development, successful mm -hmm. personal development it is the absolute key to networking. And that is listen, actively engage and listen. And if you're in a conversation and you don't pick up on everything that's being told, stop. I, I missed that last point. You, I was riveted and I got lost. Can you repeat that? In a business environment, it is extremely rare for someone to say, no, I'm not going to repeat it. I have said it. It has been said. Those words are no longer valuable. You know, yeah. Oh, wait, you thought it was brilliant? Of course I'll repeat that brilliant thing I just said. But you want that kind of clarity, that kind of trust, mm -hmm. because if I can be vulnerable, I miss that, but it's important. Please report, please repeat that, Don. Don is like, yes, as a matter of fact, it was important and it was insightful. And Glenn, not only are you tall, you are a very compassionate man as well. You know, all these other positive emotions, these positive characteristics are now imputed upon me because I just wanted John, I wanted Don to show off just a little bit more of her knowledge. So be authentic and listen. Yeah, that's excellent advice. So, you know, Glenn, how, how I like to ask my questions, I always close with something funny. What right. keeps you awake at night, Glenn? Oh my goodness. I think the one thing that keeps me awake at night is the fact that I did not get everything I wanted to get done in that day. I mean, there's so much opportunity now. I mean, literally, we talk about the pandemic and things being shut down. I'm here to tell you, the laws of economics have not been repealed. Mm -hmm. Business is still trans, um, is being uh, transacted. You know, maybe your favorite coffee shop had to shut down for a while. That doesn't mean coffee wasn't available. Opportunities are ripe. And, and I want to be even more clear mm -hmm. uh, as part of the story that I'm telling there's still fear in the marketplace yes. and there's not rationality necessarily here in California. People are allegedly leaving. I don't see nobody leaving, but <laughs> allegedly they're leaving. Um, so we have fewer, you know, a smaller population, but there's still a lot of people here. There's still people going from point A to point B. There's still traffic here, but what we're seeing is that there's a shift maybe in mindset, but not necessarily in the ability to conduct business or find opportunity. So I would strongly urge you, particularly in this environment, and I mean this, at least in the United States, keep your, um, keep, keep your, keep your kindling dry. Um, there, there's gonna be opportunities to, to, to you know, have that flame, that combustion, and be ready to grab that opportunity when it presents itself. It's a new day. People are apprehensive in some ways and they're eager to get out there and get back to practicing commerce and others. Hang out with the people who are in category two. Yes. So funny you should say that. I was just looking at some articles where they're starting to um, talk about everyone needing to go back to work and the trends where they are giving signing bonuses to dishwashers. So we are definitely in a day and age where storytelling and engagement and building your network, everything that's in this book means everything. So if you have not gotten your copy, make sure you go out to Amazon, Glenn W. Hunter. Mm -hmm. Storytelling wins the best engagements. I thank you, Glenn, for being with us today and sharing your story and teaching us all how to connect better through our storytelling. Thank you so much. Don, the pleasure was mine. Thank you. Once yes, again, thank you. Um, storytelling wins the best engagement. Um, I hope- so, so how do people get in touch with you? Yes, they have, we have to do that. Oh, Tell yeah. people how to connect with you. Get directly to me, Glenn with two N's. Uh, Glenn at Hunter and Beyond LLC.com. Glenn at Hunter and Beyond LLC.com. Get you right to my inbox. Hunter and Beyond LLC.com is my website. So you can actually get some of my business development thoughts. I'm a very active blogger. So you can get more content of what I have. Um, obviously, 
encourage you to buy the book. Um, a lot of my good thinking is in there. And again, Instagram, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Glenn W. Hunter. That's how you and, find me. Two ends in Glenn. Yes. And Glenn, don't forget your training class where I, I actually took the class and learned how to write blogs. So could you share that with them as well? Absolutely. Uh, every third Friday, I have a BYOB get together. BYOB. It's not what you think. It's bring your own blog, bring your own best idea. And if you must bring your own beverage, but it starts at 730 central time, 830 Eastern time, 530 PM Pacific time, um, third Fridays. And we spend an hour and a half talking about blogging and more importantly, how to get your ideas in the marketplace to help you professionally. Even if you're not in sales, the ability to communicate in writing is something that will set you apart from your peers and competitors. And we talk specifically about how to use that for the betterment of your careers and hopefully the betterment of your wallets. Excellent. Glenn, again, thank you. Thank you, thank you for all of your many gifts. Thank you for being here. And thank you for being with us today. Don, the pleasure's mine. Absolutely. We'll see you next time.